Hello everybody, hope you're doing well and thanks for joining us for another video. Now, a few weeks back in March, there was a partial solar eclipse, which I was fortunate to be able to witness whilst I was in Morocco, and I even managed to get some photos of it because I took my KNF solar filter with me that I'd used in Antarctica. And this eclipse got me thinking about how much it doesn't work on a flat Earth. Now, to be fair, eclipses in general really don't work on a flat Earth. Flat Earthers seemingly can't show how to predict the exact time and path of an eclipse using a flat Earth. I've heard mentions from some of sorrow cycles being the answer, but these only tell you that an eclipse will occur at a similar latitude roughly every 18 years and 11 days, but they don't tell you the exact time and subsequently the path that the eclipse will take, which isn't much use if you're trying to plan to see one. For example, a sorrow cycle can tell us that an eclipse will happen on Earth in August 2027, but that doesn't tell us the path that the eclipse will take. The heliocentric model can predict eclipses very easily. Flat Earth seemingly can't, but I think partial eclipses are the one that really highlight this best. Typically, the response by Flat Earthers when asked about how and why eclipses work on a flat Earth, like for example a lunar eclipse, they'll say something along the lines of they don't know what the moon is, the shadow that's cast on it during a lunar eclipse could be any number of things beyond our realm of understanding, and therefore they don't make any claims about it. They can't really do that with a solar eclipse though, because we know that the shadow on the sun is being caused by the moon. People might well ask, how do we know that? Well, the answer to which is, not only have people took photos during total solar eclipses where you can literally see the moon's surface, but in the days leading up to an eclipse, the moon is visible during the day with its phases gradually moving closer to a new moon, and its path is ahead of the sun but slowly closing up towards it, and in the days following the eclipse, the moon's phases can then be seen increasing towards a full moon whilst its path begins trailing behind the sun. And interestingly, you'll always find that either two weeks before or two weeks after a solar eclipse occurs a lunar eclipse. Now, this happens within the heliocentric model because the moon is orbiting the Earth roughly every 29 days. So two weeks either side of it being between the Earth and the Sun, it will be around the other side of the Earth. If the moon were orbiting the Earth along the same plane as the Earth's orbit around the Sun, then we would actually experience eclipses happening on Earth every two weeks. And you can tell that the solar eclipse is caused by an object moving between the sun and us rather than something physically on the sun because of parallax. There's a very narrow band of totality that you have to be along to see a total eclipse. If you're off to either side of that path, then you'll see the sun only partially eclipsed and the further across this path you go away from the line of totality, the less that the sun is eclipsed until you reach a point where it's not blocked at all. If it was something physically on the sun, then everybody would see the same thing. I.e., if you take a torch and you place it against the wall and you stick a piece of black tape over half of it, you can then move anywhere you want around the room and the light will always appear half covered. Now, a total eclipse is still technically possible over a flat Earth. If the moon moves underneath the sun, it will cast a shadow. The problem is, is that we can use this parallax to get a pretty good idea of how far away the moon then is, by seeing how far its position relative to the sun moves between two locations that are a known distance apart across its path. But if you do that on a flat Earth, you wind up with distances for the moon that are just too far away to fit with any other aspect of flat Earth. But this brings us to partial eclipses, which I think are more damning to flat Earth. Because 
We can prove that solar eclipses are caused by the moon moving in front of the sun, and we can prove that at that moment, the moon is closer to us than the sun is, so the sun is always shining light at the moon, meaning the moon is always casting a shadow somewhere. Now, in the heliocentric model, that shadow is traveling out into space until some point in time when the Earth moves in line with that shadow. As I highlighted earlier, if the Moon's orbit were on the same plane as the Earth's orbit around the Sun, then we would get total eclipses every four weeks as the Moon passes around between us and the Sun. But these would only then ever be visible between the tropics. Now, because the Moon is orbiting at a slightly different inclination to that of Earth around the Sun, then this shadow can then reach beyond the tropics, which is how eclipses have managed to be viewed in places like Antarctica. And this inclination can even allow the shadow of totality to miss Earth entirely, which is what actually happened in March. I was in Morocco and I saw the Moon pass just across the top of the Sun. I managed to get some photos of it early on in the eclipse as well as towards the end. I unfortunately couldn't get a view of the maximum amount of coverage that was visible there, but I did see that during the start it was covering the upper right part of the sun and then it moved across and covered the upper left section before it ended. Anyone located at more northern latitudes saw more of the sun being covered, with the most coverage being visible right up north, but nowhere on Earth was there actual totality where the moon fully covered the sun. Now, this makes sense on a globe because the path of totality actually passed above the North Pole, but if the Earth were flat, then there should be a path of totality somewhere, but there wasn't. I even sat there with Stellarium, which nobody can deny gives you very accurate details about the positions of the stars and the planets in the sky, and I physically moved the observer location all over the world, and absolutely nowhere would it have the moon lining up with the sun. Now, here is the path of that eclipse shown on a globe and you can see how the path of totality misses Earth completely because it's going above the North Pole. But here is that same eclipse on a flat map. Now, I know any flat Earthers watching at this moment will probably say, that's an AE map, not a flat Earth map. But none of them can then say what flat Earth map I should be using. But any map will still have totality missing. And I am curious, how they think they can predict the path of an eclipse if they don't have an accurate map to plot it out on. But on a flat Earth, the North Pole would still be at the center. Given that Polaris is above the North Pole and the stars appear to circle around it, and its elevation drops equally as you move south. So totality would still have been visible somewhere, which you get with a total eclipse, and a total eclipse is sort of possible on a flat Earth, but a partial eclipse isn't possible, especially in the north. You could argue a partial eclipse could be possible in the south if the path of totality is going beyond the known world, but in the north, there would be a path of totality landing somewhere. But there isn't, otherwise it would never be a partial eclipse. So, partial eclipses Easy to explain on a globe if the shadow of totality is missing Earth, but it can't miss a flat Earth. And that's going to draw this video to a close. As always, feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video and you haven't already done so, then please consider hitting the like and subscribe buttons, and hopefully we'll see you in the next video.